Dear Gwith, everyone, welcome back to my sitting room. My name is Diesel, and you are, as always, most welcome. First things first, today was September 12th. It was Paul Walker's birthday. Don't bring it up. It's still too raw and real. I just wanted you to know that I was representing. Secondly, today we're going to be reviewing a book. That book is Magonia. Um, I've forgotten the author's name. Worst book reviewer ever. Maria Davana Headley. Excellent. Very good. Thank you, me. Goodreads tells me that this is going to be part of a series, but I believe that this book was only released this year, so don't hold me to that. The book follows the life of 15-year-old, soon to be 16, Azza Ray. And Azza is extremely unusual because she suffers from a lung disease so rare that it is actually named after her. Basically, she spends her whole life like she's drowning on thin air. Um, she has a really difficult time breathing, and as you can imagine, it's not very fun. One day, Azza is looking at the sky and thinks that she sees a ship floating there in the clouds. People think that she's hallucinating because she takes a lot of medication and also because she thinks that there's a voice on the ship calling to her from the sky. At the end of the day, really, it's only her best friend Jason's slight interest, love interest, um, who believes what she's saying. And they kind of go on this journey to find out what the heck is going on until something awful happens and Azza is taken from this world and put into another one, Magonia. High above the clouds, Magonia exists as a land of floating ships where oddly enough, Azza is not drowning. In fact, for the first time in her life, she can breathe properly. And on top of that, she discovers that she has new, immensely powerful powers. And also, Earth and Magonia are on the cusp of a disagreement that will end badly for Earth. Suddenly, the whole fate of humanity lies in Azza's hands, including the boy who she's in love with, which you can imagine is quite stressful. Now that you know what it's technically about, let's get on to the feelings, the thoughts, the emotions, the feels. I already said feelings. You're just repeating yourself. You're just repeating yourself. This book started off really cool. I um, liked Azza as a character. She had a really interesting life. She's sassy, wonderfully sassy. And if you've been here a while, you'll know I love sass. I just love it. So sassy. Um, she, I nearly did a Graveyard Girl reference there, but I held back because this is serious book reviewing. Anyway, um, it starts off really good, even when the ship appears in the sky and it's like, oh, what, this is going to be cool. And then, forgive the pun, uh, the whole story falls off the face of the earth and the premise that I thought was happening disappears entirely. So, I'm really struggling to explain this book to you without giving spoilers. The book it can, in my opinion, can only be described as immensely confusing. You go into it, or I went into it, with this outlook of it was going to be one thing. And it kind of was that, but then there's this whole like other world mystical creature thing like thrown into it, which I did not see coming at all. Didn't understand that, that would be um, what it was going to be. And if you have been here a while, you will know that I sometimes find it hard to picture what the heck is going on with mystical things. It was like Daughter of Smoke and Bone, just confused my mind. Um, the story of Magonia is really meant to be this whole like girl discovers who she really is, um, then has to decide where her allegiance where her allegiance lies in terms of these two worlds. Except for me, it was really girl discovers that she has odd past but can only be her allegiance has to be with one side because new world is awful um there is no likable characters on the magonia side of this book um they're all class act douche canoes there's like one girl that I liked, um, she wasn't enough to take my allegiance. And these people, they're kind of like a mystical creature type thing, which you really can't wrap my head around. I really think the Magonia side of the book is really badly explained. It's super confusing. I had no idea what was happening all the time. 
the the plot lines that go with the Magoni side just made no freaking sense. The Earth side was like actually really good. It would have made like a really interesting contemporary style thing, but this side, no, like I was it was baffling. It was actually baffling. I want to explain to you what I didn't like about this book in depth, but because it's not in the description of the book, I feel like that's possibly a spoiler even though technically it's not it still kind of is so all I'm gonna leave you with is I get the premise of this book but it's badly portrayed and it's in my opinion others it has four star reviews so it can't be you know other people must have enjoyed it but I just I didn't like it I thought it was confusing and really hard to understand the characters are not likeable. Um, Asa kind of loses that sass, obviously because of her traumatic event. No one around her is understanding of her traumatic event. Um, and I don't know, it just... I wouldn't recommend it and I wouldn't continue on with the series and that's really all I can say to you without spoiling it. Um, but if you read it and you enjoy it or you don't enjoy it, as always, let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. And until next time, it's long.